So sometimes it's useful to compare one telescope to another. And we have some measures of comparison that uh, we'll talk about here. Um, important quantities for a telescope would first to be the diameter. If you're going to buy a telescope, uh, the diameter of the objective, either the lens or the mirror that gathers light, that's a key parameter. That's the most important parameter. Other than you know, the mounting that the telescope is on needs to be solid and not flimsy. Uh, but as far as the telescope itself, the diameter is, is very good. Uh, the diameter feeds into resolution and the ability to, uh, to see details on an object. It's a little different than magnification. Um, you might magnify something quite a bit, but if your telescope doesn't have the inherent ability to resolve objects, to see them as separate objects, then you'll just magnify a blur. Um, the mounting is important. It needs to be uh, rock solid, not uh, blown by the wind. and uh, It does have an advantage if it's able to track the movement of the stars, either by computer control or just a, a, a motor that uh, makes the telescope turn at the same rate that we see the, the stars apparently sweep across the sky. Magnification, you know, it's useful, but it's not, uh, it's not the key parameter. It's a little bit false advertising. Uh, somebody may tell you that they're going to sell you a telescope with 400 power magnification. Uh, that's usually wasted power. It's just magnifying a blur. Um, so it doesn't allow you to see more details in the image most of the time. Um, but we're going to talk about some of the calculations that can be done here to characterize a telescope. And for my students, um, if you have a lab in my course, then uh, we may run across some of this information in lab as well. Uh, so the light gathering power, this most important power of the telescope, we want to take a look first at the objective. That's where the light is gathered, at the objective, not at the eyepiece. So the objective uh, we need to um, discuss. The area of the objective gives us the light collecting ability. So it's not just the diameter, the diameter being a straight line, but we need an area. And it turns out the area depends on the square of the diameter. We are not going to calculate areas in detail. Instead, we're going to learn how to compare one telescope to another in terms of its light gathering ability. So suppose we have an 11 inch telescope. That means the objective uh, has a diameter of 11 inches. And we want to compare an 11 inch and an 8 inch telescope. The 8 inch telescope has a diameter of 8 inches for its objective. Now to compare, we must square the two numbers and divide. So we square 11, we square 8, we get 121 divided by 64, and roughly that's 2. 60 times 2 would be 120. So it's about 2, and this tells us that the 11-inch telescope gathers twice as much light as the 8-inch telescope. So to compare light gathering power, you need to be given the two diameters. You square each number and you divide that gives you the uh, ratio of the light gathering power. So take each objective diameter, square those numbers, divide the numbers, and you will have learned how much more light one telescope gathers than another. So light gathering power. The resolving power is are we able to see separate objects on the sky? And two objects are resolved if they are, are seen as two separate objects when you look through the eyepiece. Amateur astronomers often look at double stars. Uh, about half the stars in the sky are actually two stars and there are some of them that are just they're really really close um, and if your telescope is high enough quality you can resolve them. You can see them as separate objects. So how do we resolve objects? What, what makes it easier? Well if the telescope has a larger diameter then it is inherently has better resolving capabilities. So a larger diameter telescope is better able to resolve objects. There's a limit on how this uh, proceeds though because our atmospheric uh, twinkling called seeing officially this twinkling um, limits the resolving capabilities. 
but in general, larger diameter is able to see objects that are very close together in the sky more easily than a telescope with a small diameter. The second way that we can resolve objects is use a shorter wavelength of light. Um, shorter wavelength of light enables better details to be seen. Longer wavelength of light, the details get sm smeared out a little bit. So to improve uh, your ability to, to uh, see details, get a larger diameter telescope, and perhaps use a blue filter that only lets blue light come into your eye. Then magnification. Magnification is easy to calculate. Turns out that uh, these lenses will bring light to a focus in a certain distance. Um, and that's called the focal length. So the focal length of the objective divided by the focal length of the eyepiece gives you the magnification number. So if the focal length of the objective is 60 centimeters and the focal length of the eyepiece is 3 centimeters, so 60 divided by 3, magnification would be 20. A different telescope, if the focal length of the objective is 100 centimeters and the focal length of the eyepiece is 10 centimeters, 100 divided by 10, magnification would be 10. Now, if I would change this, let's I'll, I'll choose a focal length of 5 for the eyepiece, still 100 for the objective, I'll have a different magnification. I have 100 divided by 5, now I have a magnification of 20. And that is what is done at the telescope. Astronomers do not change the objective to get a different magnification. The objective is expensive. It's the most expensive part of the telescope, this large light gathering element. So the eyepieces are less expensive. It can still be costly, but less expensive and easy to pull out of the, the telescope. The objective is anchored in solidly to the tube of the telescope. So it would be very inconvenient if we had to change the objective to change the magnification. We can easily pull out an eyepiece and put in a different one. Um, so that's the magnification process. Focal length of the objective divided by focal length of the eyepiece produces the magnification. Um, the telescopes I'm used to using have a magnification of, say, 90 is uh, a common number. Um, I don't try to use 300. Again, it just magnifies the blurring. We're not on where I observe is not on the top of a mountain with nice uh, steady uh, sky. Instead, uh, where I observe has a lot of twinkling in the atmosphere, so it's not worth uh, high magnification. So that's uh, actually where this video ends with some of the parameters of the telescope, the light gathering power, no calculation for resolving power. Um, and then the calculation for magnification. So that allows you to numerically compare telescopes. Keep reading.